Can the deaf person hear their own thoughts? Greetings, Nerd Squad, and welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. I'm your host, Kong Monroe, and thank you for clicking on this co video. Is that insensitive? We all know what's going on in the world right now, but did anyone tell the Amish? And while superheroes may seem invincible, we know most aren't. But which ones consider this pandemic their kryptonite? That's what we're exploring with this list of the top 10 superheroes we may lose forever due to the global pandemic. Hit like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and stick around until the end because, I mean, you will have never thought of number two. Okay, let's get started. In a 10, Morbius the Living Vampire. Michael Morbius made his initial debut as Morbius the Living Vampire as a villain, however, he has since evolved into an anti-hero. First appearing in The Amazing Spider-Man number 101 in 1971, Morbius started out as a horror-based Spider-Man villain that requires blood several times a week in order to survive, and maintain his physical and mental strength. And with most people staying inside, those that are exposed are at a higher risk. So unless Morbius is going to be busting into homes, to which, to be fair, he might as well do, he'll be at a high risk of drinking blood that has been infected by the virus, and honestly, even if he is bringing in trying to be careful, he could essentially be guaranteeing that he would be drinking from an infected human cap or some. If the house he breaks into is on quarantine because they had a confirmed case, Morbius is screwed. And even with his advanced healing factor, he needs the blood to survive. So if it's infected... And at 9, Professor X. I mean, at this point, I feel like it's fairly evident why Professor X would go, because, like, he is one old dude. I mean, don't get me wrong, he's great, sure, but it's not like if someone was coughing, he could run for his life. While, yes, he is able to control minds, he's still in the age bracket for the most at-risk individuals. And even with all the mind control in the world, he can't control the mind of a virus that technically doesn't have a mind of its own. He's basically a sitting duck. And so would almost anyone in his school. Sure, the mutations they have may provide an accelerated healing factor or immunity, but those who don't get that, or maybe even those with mutated lungs, would be at risk. Health issues and compromised immune systems make easy prey for the virus, and it will ultimately wipe those mutants out, which is unfortunate. But with so many people in that school being in such close proximity, they would have to remain there during quarantine, and it would spread hella quickly. Especially because of Scott Summer, man. He's just kissing everyone. And in a Black Widow. The long-anticipated Black Widow film was set to release April 30th of this year. However, due to this growing threat and the concerns surrounding the illness, it was pushed to a later date. And sure, right now it's only a few months, but if the threat continues to grow and even exist, we could be seeing it pushed even more. And while yes, Disney released Frozen 2 on Disney Plus early because of the pandemic, it had already made 1.5 billion in the box office. Roughly 0.2 billion more than the previous film in the series. And we know that Disney loves money. And monopolies, but those are technically illegal. Disney won't release a movie they spent 150 to 200 million on for free on an app you need to pay like 7 bucks a month for. Technically, they wouldn't make any money off of it, only the people who got a one month subscription just to watch it. But it's still cheaper than a movie ticket, so they'd be losing income. However, Imagine the bank they can make if it comes out immediately after the quarantine is over. Everyone is gonna wanna go out, and what better way to celebrate than to see a movie? Bar hopping. But that's if they remember to release it. It took them so damn long to create the movie with Scarlett freaking Johansson, for God's sake, that they may just keep it on the back burner and just forget about it. That'll be really sad. And it's seven, Iron Man. We all know Iron Man has some health issues. The arc reactor so famously in his chest was originally implanted to keep bits of shrapnel from reaching his heart, thanks to electromagnetism. Thanks, electromagnetism. Electromagnetism, making sure those bomb bits don't reach your pumper. Well, while Iron Man may have gotten his sentient suit's artificial heart in Iron Man number 30, it doesn't bode well for the hero surviving. While the virus may not affect your heart, the issues arising from potentially contracting the virus as well as his already existing health problems make things seem dire. Sure, he may be super intelligent and could be able to find a cure, but if he hadn't found one before contracting the virus, he may not be in an amazing place to actually end up finding one before kicking the old iron bucket. I know you love Iron Man, and the last time I said anything bad about him, you lit me up like a witch at the stake. But you have to admit, if he's got it before finding the cure, he and the rest of the world would probably be screwed, no matter how much faith you have. And six, Batman. Okay, trigger warning. I don't care if he's a master of every single martial order or if he's the world's greatest detective. He is literally just a guy who can be killed by a bullet. And while he may not be in as much of a situation as Iron Man, he's still just a normal guy. We could also say that various versions of Batman could be screwed. I mean, the Bruce Wayne from Batman Beyond is old and definitely at high risk. But I mean, he's rich, so it's not like he's interacting with people much. Unless he thinks that the rules aren't applying to him, which he very well might be. 
Or we can think of the Flashpoint Batman Thomas Wayne, where Barry Allen's mother dying causes Bruce Wayne to die instead and turns his father into Batman and his mother into the Joker. But Thomas Wayne's age when Barry Allen would be an adult is for sure way too old to be fighting crime, but also to be out and about with a potentially deadly virus making the rounds like your RA when you're playing beer pong in residence while underage. <sighs> Good times. Halfway through number five, Nick Fury. While the MCU version of Samuel L. Jackson may basically be a god in my eyes, the character of Nick Fury needs to get this mother f virus off this mother f Earth. The Nick Fury in the comics is nearly a century old. While that may be confusing, this is due to the ingestion of a special medication called the Infinity Formula that Nick ingested, halting his aging and allowing him to be an active soldier despite being so damn old. The catch is, if he doesn't receive annual doses of this formula, he will age rapidly and die. And what are we supposed to do in this situation? Distance ourselves from others. And even if we are following the social distancing rule of 6 feet slash 2 meters or slash 1 hockey stick if you're in Canada, you can't get a dose of medication called the Infinity Formula from that far away. He would probably have to stay at home and hope this blows over before he's due for his next dose. It would also be worse if he had caught the virus. He would be on quarantine, and since he's such a high-profile individual, at least in the military community, he'd be guarded to assure no access to any individual. Plus, if he missed his dose and aged rapidly, everyone would start thinking it was a side effect of the virus. And the government wouldn't say, no, it's the Infinity Formula, because, well, why would they want the world to know they have such good technology? Everyone would try to steal it. And in four, Arm Fall Off Boy. Arm Fall Off Boy tried to enlist as a member of the Legion of Superheroes at the first Legion tryout, and was actually the first Legion reject. His ability is to be able to detach his own limbs, which he can use as blunt weapons. Matter Eater Live claims that Arm Fall Off Boy gained his power through carelessness with Element 152, an anti-gravity metal. But he may not have been serious, we don't really know. While yes, this character is ridiculous, do you know how much effort it must take to detach your limbs? I mean, he proceeds to beat people with it, so I'm assuming it takes a lot of energy. And he may get tired very quickly. Panting must be in this guy's list of abilities as well. So beating people with your detached limbs will end up causing respiratory problems most likely in the form of panting and losing breath. This hero catching the virus could result in him being screwed, not to mention what being able to remove your limbs does to an immune system. And Arm Fall Off Boy operated in the 80s. He was in his prime in the 80s, meaning he would be around maybe 60 to 70 now. So he's in the high risk group for this pandemic. Dude, I think we may be losing Arm Fall Off Boy forever. Close to the end in number three, Squirrel Girl. Okay, where do squirrels live? In trees. Where are trees located? Outside. Where are we supposed to stay to ensure that we don't come into contact with any potentially infected individuals? Inside. Squirrel Girl is literally useless at this point because all the squirrels think we're extinct. It's not like she can talk to any of them. She can't leave the house. Plus, she lives in New York City, so she doesn't have a backyard. Maybe not even a balcony. So there is no way she will end up seeing any squirrels. Her powers, to be really effective, require her to go outside, but I mean, they also suspended comic releases. And while some are being released digitally, it's not like they're going to focus on Squirrel Girl. They're going to focus on the big money makers, the Batmans, Supermans, and Flashes. The big earners are whether they're going to focus on digitally, especially with all that sweet, sweet web ad space that will make them so much more money that they can build that house using the money as insulation. At that point, they will be Batman rich, so we may lose her because she won't make as much money, and they'll forget about her altogether. Penultimately, in number two, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. When I'm talking old superheroes, these are literally the first people you should think of. The first appearance of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy was in the Spongebob episode titled The Same Thing, released in 1999. At that point, they were already elderly, meaning the year I was born, they were in a retirement home in Bikini Bottom. Since it's now 20 years later, I'm sure we can all figure out why they're at risk. Sure, they're underwater, but come on, even that won't stop a couple of walking statues from kicking the mer bucket. Mermaid Man even suffers from memory loss and can't even say the word EVIL without prolonging the syllable for a few seconds. How is he going to survive the virus? Ignore the fact that they're underwater because literally the Spongebob universe doesn't obey any laws of nature. Lighting fires underwater and stuff like that, like come on. So I'm sure in their universe they have their own form of the pandemic that's infecting everyone and Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy are, Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy are screwed. Finally, in the number one, healthcare workers. Anyone who disagrees with this number one is a bad person. Even employees of essential businesses are doing the Holy Lord's work right now because they can't stay home. They're out there risking their health every day, and the healthcare workers are still tending to the sick. If your relative needed surgery right now, they would still be there to save their life because that is what they do, and they don't get enough appreciation for it. 
During my senior year of college, I had appendicitis. And while I had no idea at the time, those nurses and doctors who helped figure out what was wrong with me ended up saving my life. If my appendix had burst, it would have released a poison into my bloodstream which would have required even more extensive help. And while I only found this out a year later, I made it a point to thank each person who helped me, and that was even before I figured out I could die. And this is something we need to do every time, but especially now. If you know a healthcare worker or, or know anyone who still needs to work during this time, please tell them that everyone at Top 10 Nerd says thank you for risking your health and your life every day in an unseen fight that very few of us can imagine. Thank you. There we have it friends, the Top 10 Superheroes We Might Lose Forever Due to the Global Pandemic. See what happens when YouTube demonetizes specific words, we have to come up with creative titles that get around that word, and they end up being 10 paragraphs long. If you enjoyed, be sure you give this video a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to never miss out on daily nerdy content, and ring that bell so you know when we upload. Thank you all so much for watching, I have been in Shower Main Connor Monroe, and I'll see you in another video.